Hey, what's going on guys? Sick Designs here. And uh, today I was going to make a tutorial about, um, you know, some basic uh, settings, um, kind of the basics of Cinema 4D. Um, Alright, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Cinema 4D. And uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, then, uh, you know, um, I, I normally always go over the render settings before I even start a video. But if you just happen to come across this one and haven't seen any of my others, uh, this will definitely help you out. So, anyways, the first thing I'm going to teach you guys uh, is uh, the render settings, like I said. And what we're going to do here is change the width to 1280 and the height to 720. And that way, our image or our animation that we render out in the end will obviously be in high definition. And uh, for this first part, I'm just going to be covering uh, some animation settings, like if you're making an animation. So. Uh, and then next thing you're going to do here is you're going to going to go to frame range and select all frames here Come down to save and we're going to save the format as an AVI movie Or whatever codec you might have. I don't know. It may be quick time uh, And then we'll come down to anti-aliasing and uh, if uh, You see up here on anti-aliasing where it says geometry. Well, if you change this to best you get kind of uh, a smoother edges on your reflection so like the edges won't be so jagged looking and uh, shadows as well so but uh, I will stress that if you do this uh, this will actually increase your rendering times uh, quite a bit so you know just kinda be careful when you're doing this um, I typically leave it at geometry because it still looks it looks good enough to you know it just looks good so and it and it really shortens rendering time times uh, quite a bit so I just leave it at geometry okay now we're gonna come down to options and we're gonna change the ray depth to 2 and the reflection depth to 2 as well and the shadow depth to 6 and what this will do is once again speed up rendering times we'll come down to effect we'll add ambient occlusion and uh, global illumination and in the global illumination uh, tab or the uh, selected will go into the uh, radiance catch tab change the stochastic samples to low the record density to low and the smoothing to weak and all this is to speed up the rendering times while still maintaining a pretty good looking animation or whatever you know so it still looks pretty good okay so that's basically the render settings for an animation so now if you want to do an image uh, you can go ahead and just leave global illumination like this I would go here on the general tab of global illumination and change the GI mode to IR, IR plus QMC still image. You get a better picture, and the reason why uh, we're doing this, it'll take longer time, take a longer time to render. But since it's just going to be an image or a picture, you know, it won't take any more than five or six minutes. Whereas if you're doing an animation, it may take that per frame. So that's why it's all right to kind of bump these numbers up a little bit and increase rendering times. So I'll come into anti aliasing go to best, and then change the max level to 16 by 16. And then whenever you save this, instead of AVI movie or whatever codec you have, uh, choose JPEG. JPEG looks pretty good. And uh, the frame range, you're just going to select current frame. And uh, then whenever you get this set up, whether it's an animation or just an image you're rendering out, just a single frame you're always going to go here to save whatever it may be wherever so in this case this would be a picture so you know I'd name it whatever and I've got my desktop selected here and whenever I press save then whenever I go and press this button right here to render it that's where it's going to be at so you can see right there you know it's just a black screen but um, so yeah that's that uh, another thing I want to talk about is how to create basic uh, textures and stuff. So to create a texture, you're going to come down here and double click, and then double click this box again. And then it'll bring up this uh, this box. And from here, you can go ahead and change it to any color you want, like so. And uh, you can know, you know, you can play around with the bright brightness and stuff. I can't really go into too much detail about this because this is, it really all comes down to personal preference, of course. But... Um, you know, say I bring this up to 150, and I come down and check on reflection, and bring the brightness down to about 4%, change the texture to Fresnel, and bring this down to 4%. We now have a pretty good reflective material to work with. So that's how you create materials. 
Now, if you want to duplicate a material, all you have to do is uh, select it, press Control C, Control V on the keyboard, and now you've got two, uh, you know, two materials to work with. And you can go ahead and change one of these to any color you want. So, like, uh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Make sure you're on. Uh, you select the color when you want to change the color. So, like, now we've got orange and yellow. And like always, you don't have to do that. If you want to create another material, then you can just, you know, double click down here or whatnot. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got that covered. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was the um, how to uh, get text in your, um, you know, in your animation or in your picture or whatever you decide to do. So you have this, and if you want to change it, you come down here to text. And uh, go ahead and you just type in whatever you want. Like so. And uh, these right here, these the red. Um, so the red is your x-axis. And the, uh, the y is the green here, obviously. And then the uh, blue would be your z-axis. So that's how you uh, move the text around. And uh, another quick tip. Um, you notice these gray bars here off to the left side and right side. Uh, you want to keep whatever you're uh, rendering inside of that, inside of these gray bars. Because if you don't, say like I have this over here like that, then uh, the S and part of this I is going to be cut off in the uh, final animation. So make sure that everything you do, you keep it inside of this uh, render area. Okay, so we have that. And alright, so I'm just going to go ahead. If you want to drag a material onto whatever you're doing, Go ahead and just drag it on here like so. And now we've got a material. But if we go ahead and render preview this, we have a black screen. That's because we need lighting, because we have global illumination selected. And with that, we have to have lighting to get an image. So you see nothing. Okay, so if we come up here to light and drop this in here like so. And uh, now when we press the rendering button, you'll see we do we now have an image we now can see the text okay and uh, now say maybe uh, let me undo this real quick or actually get rid of this now say maybe you don't want the whole text to be one solid color maybe you want individual letters to be a certain color well to do that you're gonna select the text and you're gonna press C on the keyboard this makes it so that each individual letter can be edited separately so say I want to just drag the orange on a single letter you can see now that only the S is highlighted uh, as orange or colored orange, and then maybe the I, uh, yellow, and so forth. So, like, you maybe want a pattern. I don't know. So now if we render preview that, you'll see that the rest of this is white, and then we've kind of got an orange and yellow pattern going on here at the left-hand side. So that's that, and um, let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, yeah, basic objects and stuff. If you want a cube, you drop down a cube like so. You can do whatever you want with it. Same thing applies, you know, you want a material on it, just put it on there like so. And uh, whenever this renders, you'll see that we now have a cube in the picture. Okay. So yeah, same thing applies for spheres or anything like that. Just drop them in and then move them around wherever you want them. And uh, now, we're actually gonna come up here and add a floor like so. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to double click, create a texture, and make this uh, pretty white and bring the brightness up to about 110%. And then go ahead and just drag this on here. And now, whenever we render this, we suddenly don't have a black screen around our text. Now we've kind of got, you know, uh, you know a floor. So. That's that. Um, forgot one thing. If you would like to um, uh, change the text here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that and start over. So like you have your text here and you want to change the uh, the font font of it, you come down to font and uh, then you go. There you go. You can change it like so. And uh, you know, you got horizontal spacing here so this will space out the letters and uh, vertical spacing um, just makes them longer 
So, and uh, you can also come down here to depth. So like you see depth here, say uh, you bring this up to 80. Obviously now your text is gonna get much thicker. Now say maybe you want, um, you know, let's say uh, you want, want this to be an animation and you want to add some simulation to whatever object you have in here. So say you have oops, a sphere like so. Make sure whenever you're, if you're doing an animation you have the right render settings set up like I showed you in the beginning of the video because that's very important. Okay, I'm just going to put it right here. And if, see down here, this is how you play play simulation, what we have. When we click play, nothing happens in that three second time period right there because that's 90 frames. Now if we click on the sphere, right click on the sphere, go to simulation tags and go to rigid body. Whenever we play this, you can now see that it falls like so. However, it is falling through the floor and maybe you don't want that. So you go to the floor, you go to simulation tags and create a rigid body. Now whenever you play it, it stops it like so. So you can see it falls and then, then quits. Um, that will work with any object. That will work with uh, the text, anything. So if I you know bring this up, go to simulation tags, make a rigid body, play it, you can see it falls. Now, if I go here, make this editable, notice how it fell in one solid like line like it all the text fell together and didn't break apart if I go here go to simulation tags to rigid body and then play this you can see each individual letter interacts on its own instead of just staying one like solid piece they all kind of do their own thing and if you notice like I said before the timeline down here is 90 seconds or 90 frames that's pretty short so um, if you want to increase that you come down here go ahead and type in like 400 for example and then drag this gray bar over to the right all the way over and now whenever we play this it'll go way beyond just 90 frames so you have a lot more time to work with with whatever you want to do and if I go ahead and render preview that we'll see what we have Okay, so that doesn't look that bad. Now, another thing you can do is is drop in a sky. So, like, actually, if I undo that real quick, if you notice back here, whenever I render this, you know, it's, it gets kind of, it's really bright and lighter color up here, and then it fades off and gets dark. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. But if you want to get rid of that, and like I said, you come up here to the the floor icon, go down to sky, click and drag, and it'll it'll drop it in. And now we render preview this the more lighting you have the longer it will take but uh, to render but you can see it kind of makes it even lighter and if we go ahead and take this same material and apply it to the sky now everything should be pretty bright white but it should look pretty nice so you can see there we've got some a really nice environment to work with a really nice white environment and the text stands out very good and uh, you know you can see here we've got some really nice reflections on the text and uh, so forth so yeah guys that's um I think that'll pretty much cover a lot of the basics um, there's actually I think there's one more thing I want to go over I'm trying to think uh oh yeah um I'm gonna select the text here all the text and say you want to make this whole thing smaller shrink it down then you click the scaling tool up here this is your scale tool and you just click on the outside of it click hold down and then you know just mess around you can make it bigger you can make it smaller whatever you want to do and uh, this is your rotation tool here so once again with the text selected, this is your rotation tool. 
just like the green axis you'll rotate it like so then you've got the red axis let's say uh, down here your HP and B rotation here so you want this exactly 90 degrees we'll just just type in 90 there and press apply it rotates it exactly 90 degrees so that's how you get really precise um, you know uh, angles that you want and you know whenever you rotate this and kind of change the position of the whole text whenever we play this now get a whole different animation as you can see there so yeah guys uh, that's pretty much and I'm not gonna get in too depth about it um, uh, I could do a lot more advanced stuff but since this is just kind of a beginner kind of basic tutorial that's pretty much a lot of the basics here and uh, yeah so I hope this helped you out guys and uh, you know as always please subscribe to my channel I'd really appreciate that and uh, like my video uh, comment on it let me know what you thought and uh, I think that'll do it for this tutorial so I'll see you guys later